Welcome, everybody. Really warm welcome to all of you to the first panel today. As you can see here in the slide, sustainable textile, is this a business model for the future? And of course, what is the role of the EU textile strategy for that? My name is Mauro Scalia. I am Sustainable uh, Businesses Director in Eurotex. And today we got a fantastic panel to address this topic. And I welcome um, the panelists. I invite them to switch on their camera and to join me in the panel virtual, of course. Uh, we have Paola Migliorini, Deputy Head of Unit in DG Environment, European Commission. We have Valerie Boyton, um, Senior Policy Officer from the Ellen McCarthy Foundation. And we have, of course, the industry, Sergio Tamborini, CEO at Ratti Company in Italy. The contest is very clear. We have a European industry, which is clearly an asset for the EU, as Maria just reminded us, very diverse, SME, and is transforming. We have textile everywhere in the policy agenda, from circularity to due diligence, and we need to understand each other, um, because the decision which will be made in the next two years will be crucial to either help this transformation or to stop the industry, as these Eurotex um, believe and pursue in its advocacy role. So let me go straight to the panelists. In the interest of time, we have only a few minutes. I will be also pleased to try to get some questions from the floor. Uh, please be concise and short in your question and specify to whom you would like to ask a question. And of course, you can type in a chat in, in Zoom here. So Paula, starting from your side, um, just a few weeks ago, I remember you used the expression that a big bang of textile policy is coming um, is coming by the end of the year. You mentioned the Texas strategy as a framework. You mentioned uh, product environmental footprint, sustainable product initiative, consumer agenda, which will bring requirement. So I wonder, can this transformation happen through framework and requirements alone? What are the limits? What do we need? What else do we need to incentivize and make this transformation happen? Paula, if you please, you have four minutes to begin with. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mauro. And thank you for having organized this, uh, this quick uh, round of thoughts on, on the topic. I think, uh, uh, yes, I mentioned a big bang because there are really a series of initiatives that are coming up. We are developing them all together, hands in hands, if I can say so. And then the one will be referring to the other, depending on when on the timing they, they will be adopted. But uh, again, really focus for all the stakeholders towards the end of the year. Uh, I think there, there might be some limitations for sure, but what is important is to see that with the textile strategy, we are addressing some of the existing limitations, which is one of the major ones that we saw was really the lack of a framework, a strategic fra framework um, that was uh, pulling all the strings of what the measures that are, uh, that are existing, the needs and challenges of the sectors, uh, some of the upcoming instruments uh, that uh, you mentioned uh, before, all together put in, in the same uh, context. So we will have uh, some uh, uh, essential requirements for Texas that will come from the sustainable product initiatives, um, measurements uh, for the impact impact of, of textiles through the work done uh, with the PEF on apparel and at the same time the strengthening of, uh, of uh, these requirements through the, the green claims initiatives, uh, requirements for co informing consumers about uh, some of the uh, of, uh, requirements uh, for durability, for example, or reparability of the products. So all we think that the, the strategy already addresses some limits. As always, there are some points that will be made uh, and highlighted for something that still needs to be done. We will try to provide also the right incentives in terms of supports uh, for innovations, for example, or from the recovery, precisely to address the limits that the strategy will have uh, further um, uh, highlighted, I, if I can say so. So I think all in all, uh, yes, uh, big bang, I confirm that. And at the same time, a kickstart to work together to fulfill all the gaps that are will still remain. Well, thanks for being concise and again, confirming requirements and also incentives. I think we're going to dig up, uh, deeper on this in the next few minutes. Uh, but let's make the first tour complete first. Valerie, uh, we are aware of the foundation work uh, on exploring new business models and that disrupt the current linear pathway for clothes. So you want to change things, essentially. 
where is the economic opportunity for the industry in your view in this strategy framework? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. And yeah, thank you very much, Mauro, for this question. So I work for the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Um, we are an NGO dedicated to the circular economy um, as a strategy, uh, you know, to basically change how we produce and, and consume our products and making sure that that fits within climate uh, scenarios. Um, but you're rightly asking me, I mean, there's the word economy in circular economy. So where is the economic opportunity? What is a circular business model? We don't claim to have that fully figured out um, at this stage. A key principle is, of course, decoupling. So we need to find ways of decoupling, on the one hand, economic activity. On the other hand, the consumption of finite resources. That is, in our view, a core principle for whatever circular business models um, there may be. I think at this stage, looking at textiles and maybe specifically fashion, uh, we're seeing new models arising. We're seeing great success in resale, for example. Uh, but perhaps there, there are also trends at the moment. So we're not too sure how, you know, how this will evolve over, over the future. And this is precisely where policy probably has a key role to play. Um, so in really identifying what it is we want to achieve and bringing all the actors around the table, making sure it actually works across the value chain for all, all industry actors uh, in Europe, but also identifying um, what we want these business models to really deliver on. So at the moment, we don't quite know what their impacts are, how to measure um, what they deliver in practice. So are there any KPIs, benchmarks um, on a policy level that we, we could put in place? I think that would be a great place uh, to start from uh, for the textile strategy. Brilliant. You've been very clear and concise and you already put forward key elements, economic activities from resources need to be the couple in the KPI and we need to learn a lot of things working together. Let me go to Sergio now. Sergio, you represent a European company, many European companies today, of course. Uh, your company embraces sustainability and like basically everybody else in the sector goes through very hard time um, because of the current situation. Now, the industry has one opportunity, a dedicated sector strategy. Um, what we shall make out of it in your, in your opinion? Sergio, you are muted. Sergio, I'm afraid we can't hear you. Yes, thank you. No, still, still not okay. Okay, as happened sometime in the live streaming events, we might have a technical issue. Sergio, now you, oh, can you, we heard you, for, yes. Try now, please. Okay, okay. Uh, good afternoon to everyone and thanks for the invite. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, we have to underline that for the Italian, but for the European clothing textile, the sustainability is not uh, a new entry, but is a part of a business strategy that started some years ago. Surely the post-pandemic scenario confirms and accelerated two key words. One is the green and the other is the digital. I think that we have to pay attention to dimension that became more and more important every day. Uh, the Italian system has joined voluntary chemical management schemes some years ago and the proposed sustainable product a long time ago. But now in terms of circular economy, we have also to remember that uh, Italian is the first place in Europe, uh, in Union Europe for the recovery of industrial and urban waste. So we have a long story behind, but we have in front of us uh, new uh, activity that we have to, to improve uh, and to realize uh, a new scheme of work. In terms of def defining an European strategy for the textile, I think that it's an important occasion to underline some point uh, and to that I consider essential. First of point that seem uh, to be banal, but is not, uh, is not true, is the knowledge. The textile sector is not so easy like seems, is an old, old economy, but uh, uh, to arrive at the final product, uh, you have many phases, many activity, a difference of fiber, a difference of activity. And they think that uh, knowledge means that the public decision maker that define the policy in, in the European Union as to know much more of the product, the process, the technology, the waste management. 
the practice and the circularity in the textile sector. Sometimes uh, we have some rules that is not so easy to apply, is not possible to apply on one side. And uh, on the other side, the European producers are on a different uh, level compared with the importer of product in Europe. That is another very important uh, key point. The rule has to be the same between the producer, the local producer, and the importers. Uh, just uh, a, a little uh, thing, but the reach, uh, the chemical uh, system is applied for the European producer, but uh, the product that arrive from China or for other uh, country are not subject at the same level. Um, Another point that I think it's important is that the, the relationship between the European legal framework and the national legal framework. Sometimes when the, it became different, the legal framework that we have in the singular nation compared with the, the, the European framework from the, point of, from the level point of view, we, we have some limit of the circulation of the product from one country to the other regarding, for example, all the dimension of the circular economy and the waste of the product. If we have a rule that is different for the product, the waste product in Italy compared with in France or in Spain, it's not possible to have a policy for the rehab that is correct. And finally, I think that the textile sector cannot work alone, but have to work with uh, on one side the mechanic activity and the other side with the chemical activity. Thank you, Sergio. You laid out clearly a few points. There has to be a learning process about the complexity of the textile sector. You raised the point between the difference of locally made in Europe products and imported products. And you raised about the importance of learning from also the other different value chains. Paula, if I can go back to you, uh, you heard a few statements. I'm sure you heard you're quite used to some of these points. Uh, you heard also new statements uh, in this first round. What is your first reaction to what you heard from the civil society and especially and also from the industry? Yes, thanks. Uh, in fact, I, I took notes. You were seeing me. I was writing down. Not because they were new, because as a matter of fact, uh, all these points, the, the the knowledge of the policymakers and the the differences of uh, of the rules between producers and importers, and then also the relationship at, um, between the, the different uh, legislation uh, levels, are all points that. Uh, we are well aware of and at the same time this is why we are trying to uh, in order to address them in the best possible way we need and we are collecting the inputs from the stakeholders also on these specific topics and then we have a series of, uh, of public consultations and then uh, workshops that are really ongoing um, specifically on these points the one on uh, on the on the different situations from importers and uh, and producers is was was addressed uh, Tuesday afternoon just to tell you uh, a detail and then of course it's not a magic uh, magic solutions that we have but it's at this stage of the strategy development uh, what is important is that we collect all the different details so for this uh, I can assure that we are uh, on, on good track. Um, Concerning the issue about the, the different levels of EU and national, I have actually something interesting that I think we can we can really work because it's in some cases this uh, difference works as a as a motivator or let's say as a as a additional reasons for uh, acting at European level and, and which is very very beneficial. We're looking into that, for example, for the existence of some uh, extended producer responsibility schemes that are called by the sector and. We're looking at what exists at, uh, in some in some countries to see what can be raised at European level. So absolutely, in line with uh, with the, the representative of, of industry, uh, I would say, and that I thank for for pointing to to these uh, specific issues. I also wanted to to react to Valérie and uh, her statement about uh, uh, being so the Yellow MacArthur Foundation is really engaged into the transition to circular economy and engaging in. Uh, recognizing the responsibility of the public authorities, especially at European level, to bring all the stakeholders around the same table, all the different actors of the of the value chain. It is something that we are trying to do as well, and as specifically for the textile strategy, I think that uh, uh, reaching out also to consumers will be uh, quite uh, quite important. Again, 
uh, reaching to producers is not so difficult. It's maybe the difficulties are in implementing the changes. Uh, reaching out to consumers is uh, it's a challenge, I think, that we, we still have. But uh, I think with the help of everyone, we're going to make it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, staying on this point, you just mentioned also the EPR, Extended Producer Responsibility Scheme. Do you think we're going to have harmonized guidelines at the EU level? Can you give us a... Well, a what we know is that what is uh, really needed and then what it works is at least the minimum requirements, because you also need to see how, so from a multinational perspective, the uh, the nirvana would be to have one system of course because then you have the same in all the countries but from a country perspective all you know economic structures might be different and other uh, uh, system might uh, might have already been uh, developed with other logics in mind so i think that what worked up until now and it has worked also for other products uh, is uh, minimum requirements so i think we are heading towards that but it is true that there has been a lot of exchange with systems like in france for example uh, what is important to keep in mind is that whatever we will manage to do and agree with the stakeholders and then at the same level afterwards the parliament and the council will have to be uh, i don't see that we just cut and paste the system that works one place and then we will impose it everywhere else. It will be necessary some adaptations to take into consideration all the differences. I Understood. think that's the best. Understood, clearly. Thanks for these insights. Valerie, we still keep hearing a lot about requirements. Um, I am aware that the foundation worked for many, many years, first in plastic and then in textiles industry. Um, can you tell us beyond the requirements, what do you think in your experience um, can be, for instance, mistake which might have in the past or challenges we should not be missed when working in a new EU textile strategy. Lessons learned from your previous works. What, what would you like to share with us? Yeah, so we have indeed worked quite a bit on identifying what circular design means in practice on a product level. Um, and we've tried this out with jeans and the project called the Jeans Redesign, um, where actually lots of brands are, are participating and producing jeans at scale that are entirely in line with circular economy principles. But I fully see your point in that you, you can pr produce a perfectly designed item, but then you don't have a guarantee as to how it will be used, reused, how it will sort of flow in the economy. So indeed we do need sort of, you know, working from two directions, I suppose, on the one hand, establishing a baseline to so a minimum requirement that we, we want products to meet in terms of durability, recyclability, upgradability, and so on. But on the other hand, we also need to very much invest in the infrastructure. So in building that system that actually captures that value, because at the moment we see perhaps after seven or eight, eight wears, uh, an item of clothing will get thrown away. But then where does it actually go? Do we have the economic actors? Are they fully equipped also to sort, uh, uh, to collect and sort um, and, and give it the best possible destination? So there's this whole sort of infrastructure, but also innovation element that definitely needs to be, needs to be tackled. Thank you, Valerie. Maybe with that, we can go back to Sergio. We just mentioned investment and infrastructure. I think, Sergio, this is more your area. Um, Valerie also mentioned, remind us, that there will be a big obligation across Europe to collect textile waste. Could that be part of the uh, next focus of the policy of the textile strategy? Or in your opinion, in terms of investment and support for infrastructure, what do you think is, should be prioritized, Sergio? I think uh, that, uh, first of all, uh, we have to to have clear the rule, uh, European and national rule, where to move in. On the second, surely there is some nation, for uh, example, France, that is uh, get over, and there's the first uh, consortium for the, 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 the waste uh, apparel. Instead of Italy, we need much more investment in infrastructure and in logistical activity. Then we have the culture for the, in the industry for the treatment of the product. So I think that we have to put together one level that is the logistical and the other level that is the infrastructure to, to, to use and to manage the waste uh, clothing. Uh, the problem of, of the waste are the, the waste uh, after the consumption that can be collected with the store or uh, in the normal way. And on the other side, uh, the waste that became from the industry uh, sector. So they have to put together on a certain level of the industry and to generate a new product. 
and that has to be on the same level the, the fiber, the natural and the synthetic and artificial fibers. I think with a, a different story in, a, in, a, in the area of Prato, we have a longer story of uh, recovery of the, of the wool, for example, and can be something that is useful for all the European nations. And the problem is to collect and, and, uh, and show is the wool in all the nations. So on one side, implement the industrial activity, but on the other side, I think that the logistical infrastructure are very important and need a huge quantity of money. Clearly, clearly, clearly the point, we need partnership, we understand, across the value chain from the logistic into the industry side. Uh, we have five minutes left. I would like to have a quick look at the question from the floors and then still ask everybody um, a quick statement uh, before we hand it over to Lisa and the colleagues. So I see we have three questions only, actually now four in the chat. One is clearly, two are clearly for Paola about what is the focus on the clothing, on the strategy. It's only on clothing or other types of products. Uh, there is another one on GRC. It's a little bit long. Maybe we don't have time for that. There is a provocative question on polyester. Maybe that's a question also for Valerie. Is poly, can, be, can polyester be fully replaced? And, um, and also a question due diligence. And uh, can due diligence in large or small companies be promoted in the tax strategy? Um, question, I guess, for everybody. Short answer, if you may. Um, yes. Paula, starting with you, please. Yes, I'll, uh, it will be very short. So the focus of the textile strategy will be not only on clothing, but on textile. So at large, because this is how you get all the circularity of, of the sector, uh, all the opportunities for circularity. So overall textiles. And at the same time, the question about the GRC, yes, there are several tools, not only from GRC, huh, but from different other uh, commission services. So. Uh, um, the, the textile strategy will pull all the existing initiatives together and present them. So somehow I would say, yes, the strategy itself will be a summary of what exists uh, in terms of uh, requirements and incentives. So maybe I think that's, uh, that is at least one of the, of the aim. Um, if I can say the question on due diligence, I will be very happy to hear if possible from uh, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Tamborini, if industry is, how industry is addressing um, this, this issues itself. So uh, national and then of course international, if there are cooperations outside Europe with companies that are producing textile outside to you know, be sort of ambassadors of, of these issues. But <laughs> we go quickly to that, Sergio. Do you have a comment on the level playing field and due diligence? But I think that uh, due diligence, uh, we have to pay attention to uh, the due diligence because sometimes we improve the number of due diligence one after the other, but don't solve really the problem. Uh, it's an experience for us, for example, our company is certified SA8000, uh, 47 certification, then arrive the brand and want to improve a certification by himself. And you have a new activity, so you have the internal audit, a second cost, a third cost, but don't arrive at the real point. The real point is not the company, the textile company that is in front, but the textile company that are behind the company. And you have to have a, to be really, to arrive at the hand of the chain to understand if the system that is behind the big company is correct or not correct. And sometimes also to discuss regarding the product that are green product, we have to pay attention because uh, some product uh, became from a chain that is not really a recovery chain, but you start to produce something to have uh, a waste product to generate uh, a green product, a bio product, but is not really a bio product. So we have to to consider that uh, the, 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 the system, the textile system and the upper system is uh, based on the consumption, but sustainability is not consumption. So we have, uh, a, we produce every day something that is not useful for everyone. Mm. It's absolutely unuseful product and is no serious uh, 
industry is a serious for all the person that work inside and have a salary every month. To balance these two things, to improve the quantity and to reduce the pollution and to reduce the consumption or new material is a balance that we have to find in the future and is not only an audit that change or a requirement, a rule that change. It's something that has to change in the mentality of the producer and the consumer. Thanks, Sergio. Very handsful insights from experience. We have to call towards the end of this discussion. Um, final question from, I guess, um, Valerie and, and Paola, in the interest of time. What will the strategy be remembered for? If you can say with a slogan. Uh -huh. Uh, I hope uh, I hope that would be remembered for um, for having kickstarted a joint process. It's true that there are front runners, it was said, but something that really gets everyone behind. A little bit like what was the plastic strategy, if I can make this comparison. Uh, so uh, all the actors from industry, not only the front runners, not only the ones who wants to be green, but that it becomes. The strategy sets the time, the clock for the sector to realize that there's no other way than producing like this and then helped, of course, and supported by the legislation. And then consumers also get into this, just like they did for the plastic strategy and the movement around the single use plastics. So if there could be some awareness around this, it would be great. Thank you. Valerie, and then Sergio, one sentence. What the strategy will be remembered for? Valerie, if you please. I think it would be great if the strategy sets out a vision. Where do we want to go to uh, now, 2030, 2040 and beyond? And of course, a circular economy um, for, from our point of view would be an excellent uh, vision to, to strive towards. So having that in place would also send out the right market signals and other signals um, in order you know, to, to base investment decisions on, future policy decisions on, and so on. And I will reply to the polyester question in the chat, actually, because that is something I would definitely like to answer. <laughs> We're running out of time on that. Um, yeah. Sergio, one sentence. If I, I hope that uh, the strategy will be remembered uh, like a vector to, for facilitating and developing a new economy, a social, a different social and environment sustainability for all the, the, the textile sector. Perfect. Thank you very much. You very much align also with what Paula said, I think, and also with the vision of Barry set out. So thank you very much for your time, all of you. Lisa, I hand it over to you. I apologize for one extra minute we use and wish everybody a good continuation of today for the next one hour. Thank you.